Okay, so in this video, we have to find the interval of convergence of this power series. We'll start by using the ratio test. So the ratio test says that you take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And one of three things uh, can happen here. If the result is less than one, we have convergence. If the result is greater than one, we have divergence. And if the result is equal to one, we have no information. So in this problem, we want it to converge, so we want everything to be less than one. So when we take this limit, we'll just force it to be less than one. Okay, so let's start. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. And we'll start by replacing all of the n's with uh, n plus 1's. So this is the absolute value of, so negative 1 to the n plus 1. And instead of n factorial, it's n plus 1 factorial. And then here we have x minus 7 to the n plus 1. It's all being divided by 3 to the n plus 1. So all we've done is we've replaced all of the n's with uh, n plus 1's. Now we're dividing by a sub n. So when we divide by a sub n, we really multiply by the reciprocal. So this here is our a sub n. So instead of dividing, we'll just multiply and flip it. So this is 3 to the n over, and then this is negative 1 to the n, n factorial, and then x minus 7 to the n. All right, good stuff. So tons of cancellation is going to occur here. So first notice that the negative 1s will go away because when you take the absolute value of negative 1 to the n, this is either going to be, this piece here, is going to be 1 or negative 1. If it's 1, the absolute value of 1 is 1. If it's negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is also 1. So no matter what, this is 1. So these go away in these problems. Uh, as far as the factorials, we have n plus 1 factorial over n factorial. Well, we can think of n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1. Then you subtract 1. So the next one would be n, and then n minus 1, etc. But that's actually just n factorial which is what's on the bottom. So these cancel and we're left with n plus one. Let's go ahead and write that down at least. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value. So you have an n plus one up top. Okay, the negative ones are gone. What's left? Let's see. Ooh, how about this x minus seven? So you have x minus seven to the n plus one over x minus seven to the n. What happens here is that you can rewrite it you can rewrite the x minus 7 to the n plus 1 as x minus 7 to the n times x minus 7. And then the x minus 7 to the n will cancel. And so we're left with x minus 7 up top. Good stuff. So x minus 7. All right, that takes care of that. And then the last thing that will happen is the three n's. Well, I'll skip the step here, but it's the same thing. You have 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. So the 3 to the n will cancel, and you're left with a 3. Okay, you're left with a 3. I'll go, well, I guess I'll go ahead and show the step here. It's 3 to the n, 3 to the n plus 1. And so you write that as 3 to the n, 3 to the n times 3. Boom, so you just get 1 over 3, which we're left with the 3 on the bottom. The steps are exactly the same. You know, the more of these problems you do, the more you realize that they're all pretty much, uh, it's always the same simplifications. So once you can do like a couple of these, uh, you'll be able to do uh, all of them. All right, so if you take this limit, you'll notice um, that it's going to be infinity because n is approaching infinity. So the only thing uh, that's going to make this limit not be equal to infinity is if x is equal to 7. You see, because if x is 7, we'll get 7 minus 7 which is zero. And so this will be zero. And so this whole thing will be zero. So this limit is equal to zero. 
if x is 7. They'd say, whoa, ha, what if you don't, what if I don't notice that? Um, you will. Whenever you get infinity here, you have to think, okay, how can you not get infinity? Because you want this to converge. So the only way this limit will not be equal to infinity is if x is equal to 7, because then 7 minus 7 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so the whole thing is just 0. And this is less than 1. So it'll converge by the ratio test. So this converges only when x is 7. So this limit is equal to 0 only when x is 7. So that means that 7 is the only place that this series will converge. And that would be the interval of convergence. Even though it's a number, we still call it the interval of convergence. Notice that 7 is the center of the power series. Right? Remember, power series have the form... Uh, a sub n, x minus c to the n. So this is a different a sub n here. This is your a sub n if you're trying to fit the power series formula. And so you see the center is 7. If you think back to the convergence theorem for power series, one of the cases in that theorem said that uh, the series only converges at x equals 7. That's one of the things that can happen. And this is an example of that case. So... Uh, pretty nice uh, problem. Just to give you another quick example, like let's say you had something like limit n goes to infinity. Say you work out a problem and you get something like this, n plus 2, n plus 6, x minus 4 over 18. So you get this. Same thing here, right? This is going to be infinity, this piece here. And the only way this is equal to 0 is if x is 4. So if x equals 4, you get 0 because you get 4 minus 4, which is 0. So in this case, the interval of convergence would be 4. So it does happen sometimes, and it's pretty easy to notice. You just have to think, okay, what can I do to make this whole thing 0? Okay, x, x equals 4. In our example, it was x equals 7. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.